Okay, so <laughs> buckle up because this deep dive is uh, taking us straight to the heart of the EV revolution. Oh, absolutely. And trust me, you are going to want to hear this. Okay. You sent over some articles that really popped my eye. Top car designers are ditching these legendary brands, you know, these huge names to join Chinese EV companies. Yeah. Like that's a power move, right? It is. So let's break down exactly who is making these moves. Who are these people? Why are they so drawn to these Chinese companies? Yeah. And what could it mean for the future of the entire car industry? Yeah, no, it's a it's a seismic shift, I think, in the automotive world for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's not just a few big names, it's a whole wave of talent. Right. Like we're talking a very deliberate strategy by these Chinese companies to really pull in the top design talent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be fascinating to see how it shakes things up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's talk about this exodus because one article mentioned Anthony Lowe, right. who was Ford's former chief designer. Wow. Right, huge deal. And he went to BAIC, which is a Chinese EV company. Yeah. That's not a lateral move. That's a statement. It really is. And he's far from the only one. I mean, you're seeing people like Wolfgang Egger, who was formerly at Lamborghini, right? Right. Leading design at BYD. Wow. And it's not limited to designers either, like highly skilled engineers, software developers, particularly from companies like Toyota. Really? Are packing their bags and heading east. Interesting. Um, it's it, a talent drain that has to have some industry giants feeling a little nervous. Yeah. I, it's What's behind this massive talent grab, though? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it really as simple as... Show me the money. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be honest. Money talks. Right. And these Chinese companies are reportedly rolling out some pretty impressive salaries. Okay. Much higher than their Western and Japanese competitors. But the articles that you shared suggest it's not just about padding their bank accounts. Yeah. There's a deeper motivation at play here. Okay. So it's not just about the paycheck. Right. Now, this is where it gets really interesting for me. Yeah. It's about the opportunity. It seems that Chinese EV companies are offering something incredibly appealing to these creative minds. Okay. And that is freedom. Imagine being able to throw out the old rule book and just reimagine what a car can be. Mm. These companies want to be on the bleeding edge of design and innovation. And they're giving these designers the space to do that. So they're not just playing catch up. They want to be the ones setting the trends. Exactly. And to pull that off, yeah. you need the best of the best, mm. even if it means paying a premium. It's a bold strategy. Yeah. And it's not just, I think, reinventing the wheel, so to speak. Right. Um, you know, they're attracting this top talent because they're offering them a chance to be a part of something big. Yeah. Something new. Yeah. There's a sense of excitement. You know, being at the forefront of a global shift. Totally. And you can have the most advanced electric motor, the longest range battery, but if the car itself doesn't grab you, right. if it's... It's just a collection of parts. Yeah, it doesn't have that. Yeah. It's not aspirational. These Chinese companies get that. Design isn't just about aesthetics, right? It's about evoking desire. It's yeah. about creating an emotional connection. Totally. They want their cars to have that same aura of luxury and aspiration that brands like BMW and Mercedes have spent decades building. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm seeing in these articles, they are not shying away from making bold moves either. Not at all. Like, it's not just about copying the Western playbook, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. They're crafting their own narrative here. Absolutely. There's a clear departure from the traditional, you know, chrome and leather definition of luxury. Right. Some Chinese EV companies are going in a completely different direction, like embracing minimalist interiors. <laughs> using sustainable and even futuristic materials. Okay. And seamlessly blending cutting edge technology throughout the design. Yeah. It's a new kind of sophistication. You mentioned sustainable materials and one article highlighted this company that's using a bio-based leather alternative yeah. that's made from pineapple fibers. I know, right? Like that's thinking outside the box. Exactly, and it speaks to a larger trend, I think, you know, okay. It's not just about looking flashy anymore. Right. It's about appealing to a new generation of car buyers with different values. Mm -hmm. This generation prioritizes sustainability, yeah. seamless tech integration, and a more futuristic, minimalist aesthetic. For sure. They want a car that reflects their values. It's fascinating to see how these companies are weaving together these cultural influences, pushing these technological boundaries, yeah. and really tapping into this evolving consumer mindset. Yeah. This feels like a real turning point in the auto industry. It does. 
Do you think legacy automakers are starting to sweat a little? I think tough questions is an understatement. Okay. I mean, for decades, the automotive hierarchy felt set in stone, right? Right. But the strategic design investment from Chinese companies, it's a direct challenge to the established order. Yeah. They can't just rely on their brand recognition and their history anymore. Because a fancy emblem on the hood only goes so far when you've got this new wave of EVs that are really turning heads with their design and their innovation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They need to innovate. Yeah. And not just when it comes to batteries and electric motors, right? But in their entire design language. Right. They need to figure out how to attract and most importantly retain top talent in this rapidly changing landscape. And let's be honest, the days of assuming a Chinese car is just some budget knockoff are over, right? Yeah. This feels bigger than just some passing trend. Absolutely. It feels like a total reshaping of the entire automotive landscape. For sure. I mean, we started by talking about how a few high profile designers were jumping ship and now it's a full blown exodus of talent. Yeah. And these companies are backing up their ambitions with serious cash, right? <laughs> Sending a message to the world. These companies are not just here to compete, they're here to lead. It's captivating, isn't it? Totally. We always talk about disruption in the tech world, but this is disruption with an engine and four wheels, you mm -hmm. know? This challenges every single thing we thought we knew about the car industry. Yeah. And it goes way beyond manufacturing. This has the potential to shift global influence when it comes to design and innovation in one of the most competitive industries on the planet. You know, I was thinking about what you said earlier about how these Chinese EV companies are really tapping into the values of a new generation of car buyers. Yeah. It's not about status or horsepower anymore. Right. It's about sustainability. It's about technology. And it's about a design philosophy that really reflects a worldview yeah. that seems like a pretty powerful advantage to have in the long run. Absolutely. It's about understanding that today's car buyer particularly that younger demographic. Right. They're not just looking for a car. They're looking for an experience. Yeah. They expect their cars to be as connected and intuitive as their smartphones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With a focus on sustainability and cutting-edge materials, that's the sweet spot that these Chinese companies seem to be aiming for. So for our listeners out there, the next time you see a sleek, head-turning EV on the road, don't just assume it's a Tesla. Take a closer look. It might just be a product of this new wave of automotive design coming straight out of China. It's definitely a trend worth paying attention to, and it really highlights how powerful the combination of economic forces and creative ambition can be. Absolutely. It's a wake-up call to the entire industry, and it poses a fascinating question for all of us. Yeah, what's that? In a world that's completely saturated with technology, what's going to capture our imaginations in the future? Mm. What's going to drive our choices? That's a great question to leave everyone with today. Yeah, I think so.